My name is Heather Smith, and I'm the Director of Anatomical Laboratories and a Professor of Anatomy at Midwestern University, which is in Glendale, Arizona. And I worked on this project with a team of colleagues also from Midwestern. Brent Adrian is a Senior Research Specialist. He's a paleontologist and scientific illustrator who studies extant and fossil mammals and reptiles. Ari Grossman is a professor of anatomy, and his primary interests are in the evolution of African and Eurasian mammals. And we had two student co-authors on the paper. Rahul Koshi is a third-year medical student, and Ryan Allwill is a third-year veterinary student. Lycaon pictus is commonly known as the African wild dog or the painted wolf. They're native to southern Africa, and they're a member of the wolf clade. So they're most closely related to the dole, which is the Asian wild dog, and also to Ethiopian and African golden wolves. The most fascinating thing about the African wild dog is that they are endurance runners. So they're extremely nomadic. Packs often travel up to 50 kilometers per day in search of prey. They have really large home ranges. So the home ranges can extend anywhere from 500 to 3,000 square kilometers. And they use a really interesting type of predation referred to as exhaustive predation. So rather than hunting using speed or stealth or um, strength, they typically run their prey until the prey essentially collapse from exhaustion. African wild dogs are hyper carnivores, which means that they eat almost exclusively meat. Therefore, their hunting success rates are extremely important to their survival and they're very efficient hunters. So up to 60% of, of hunting attempts result in successful kills, which is higher than lions, which are typically around 30% success rates, and hyena, which are typically between 25 and 30% success rates. The unfortunate thing though is that African wild dogs sometimes lose their successful kills to some of those larger and more aggressive carnivores. So my colleagues and I were interested in identifying anatomical adaptations to endurance running in the African wild dog. So we conducted CT scans and dissections of African wild dog forelimbs to see what we could find. We discovered anatomical adaptations to endurance running in African wild dog forelimb bones, muscles, and ligaments. Our most exciting finding was African wild dogs have been described previously as being tetradactyl, meaning that they have four digits on their front claw, as opposed to a domestic dog, which might have a dew claw. However, we discovered that they do actually have a vestigial first digit. It's very small, it's deep to the skin, doesn't have a claw, but it completely reorganizes the muscles that normally attach to the first digit. So now those muscles, rather than acting on the first digit to move it, they instead stabilize the wrist. They act as proprioceptors, meaning they help the body's awareness of where it is in space and help to provide balance. And then we found some other muscular adaptations. Um, there were expansions in certain muscles that have been described previously as having a high percentage of what are called type two muscle fibers. So these are the type of muscle fibers that are called slow twitch. They're resistant to fatigue. They're often found in high percentages in um, endurance athletes, so in, in runners. And finally, we also found an interesting ligament in the forepaw of the African wild dog that stores elastic energy. It seems to act like a spring to kind of propel the wild dogs forward um, using non-muscular energy during locomotion. It's just the bones, but you can see this little nub here probably works better in certain, certain angles. Yeah, that nub there, that's the, that's the vestigial first digit. 